What about Pillarsen? Do you not think this could be his year to topple the big juggernauts, get into that last echelon that he's not? Did this race really give you a glimpse of that? Like, I'm I'm not no. doubting that that Payerson is going to be up there. I think he's a great rider. He's such a hardy sprinter and a tough, tough day. Payerson is fantastic. It's a shame he's around now with all these Galacticos. If he were around in the mid-2010s, that man would be hoovering, vacuuming up big race wins. It's just a shame he's riding against so many like super versatile riders. We saw that at Glasgow in the world is that he was incredibly strong that day, but just he's got these like super talents of Pogacar and Ralph and Matthew van der Poel to contend with all the time. It's a shame. But um, I don't think this race really tells us anything that we didn't know beforehand. He'll probably go on to win at least one World Tour sprint in the next two, three months. Wait, did you just call Wout Van Aert a super talent? I think that's the first compliment you've said of Wout Van Aert ever. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> that's so feeling good. generous on my birthday. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it is quite, well, like you guys said, we don't know anything until we hit the cobbles and... Yeah. I, do, I think based rather, rather solely on the world champs last year, the fact that Pedersen, like, we had these Pogacas and Wabanarts and Vanderpools in a complete different tier to Pedersen. And I think that if there is going to be anybody in the peloton who can breach into that category, I think Pedersen's the guy. Because he was, like, you have to, he was so close to being third. Like, he almost beat Pogaccio on that World Champs Day. And the fact that he's even there is is insane that shows he almost is on the same level he i'm gonna what? consolidate this sorry he... Scott. i'm gonna consolidate this by mentioning the role of Landler last year as well yes exactly one of the most attritional monuments we've seen in a very long time he was fantastic in that race very daring uh maybe if he wasn't quite as daring he would have had more left in the tank but he left everything out on the road and still got a podium place in that race out sprinting guys who probably or who had easier times in the race that, than he had. Like what went on. Well, exactly. And also <laughs> guys who were hanging on in, in that group as well, Nielsen Powers and so forth. I know they don't have the natural sprinting skill, but they weren't quite as uh, as exposed and solo as uh, as Pearson was in that race. So I think the World Championships and the Ronald Van Vlander have proved that he has real strength of character and real sort of fortitude. Earlier on, I was talking about longest sprints in pro cycling. One of the longest sprints we've had at a Grand Tour in a long time was that sprint in Limoges last year that Pearson took the win at, beating guys like your Jasper Philipsers, like your Wout Van Aert, um, who are a little bit more sort of, they're, they're, they're lighter, they're more sort of built for the sprints, but Pearson just sort of smashed it through on what was a really, really long sprint and took the win. So I definitely think if anyone's going to sort of smash through this Galacticos and win a monument this year, Pearson's my man. We just need Pyro Bay to be wet, and then he'll probably win it. Well, I mean, even at Pyro Bay last year, he definitely showed. Oh yeah, four like four. Yeah, Number four because he struggled at Pyro Bay. If you look at his Pyro Bay record, it's not particularly great until last year, and he was right up there again. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Mas Payson win at least one World Tour Classic this year. He should really. Do you think Pedersen's winning a monument this year? I don't know. I, I also can tell you which one it was. I'd say probably. Ronda, because he's got the best record there. Yeah. But if if a San Remo came down, like he looked good at San Remo last year, definitely improving on where he was before. If he was up there in San Remo and it was more of a sort of group sprint kind of scenario, I think he could definitely be there. Could he hang on to? Is that basically can he hang on to a Van der Poel attack if it goes on the Poggio? Well, I say if when it goes on the Poggio. If he does and he hangs with him and it's a one-on-one -on -one sprint, I think Pedersen has him. At the same time as well, would Maz Pearson do a Jasper Sturman kind of thing and try to go on his own? Because people yeah. know what what Pearson could bring in a sprint. People might, might be a little bit afraid. He also might sort of want it to be in a sprint scenario too much. But if he was a little bit more daring and went out on his own and used that big engine that he has, does he have a better chance of winning a solo than in a sprint? Should he try to play that game? We haven't had sort of big group sprint for Sandremo for the victory since 2019. That was before the COVID paradigm shift in the sport. So maybe uh, he has to evoke the spirit of his uh, current teammate, Jasper Sturvens, take the win. I think he could do it that way for sure. I think, like you say, if people look around and be like, oh gosh, Pedersen's on my wheel. There's no way I'm going to take him to the line. Maybe if you're out one eye, you might fancy your chances. But I think that if you're a Pogacar or Pogacar Mohoric 
Vanderpool, I think you would be quite nervous of the fact of Pedersen doing that. But if you just, you know, if Pedersen's just by himself and he's got two seconds, you know, two seconds at the bottom of the Poggio is almost like 10 seconds in, in San Remo. It's kind of weird because people just really very quickly start looking around. I'm like, we're, we're almost focusing in that San Remo is the one, but... I don't think it is. I think it's Pyro Bay. Think, yeah. You think it's Roubaix? Like you said, he had bad luck. Like he had a real tough Roubaix. It's very possible that he could have better luck. And he's got yeah. he's got a good team too. Yeah, I mean, Roubaix is probably the worst one to try and win because anything can happen, literally. Also, I think just Roubaix breeds like uber specialists, like guys who really smash Roubaix and we don't see them elsewhere. I don't know if we've quite seen that much wonderful <laughs> okay okay but like in terms of there are guys who can get a really great result on Roubaix and not quite be there at other races like Casper Asgrain for instance winner of Ronda Vlandre yeah. never ever top 10 Paris Roubaix been there like four or five times Matt Payson until recently not quite been up there Peter Sagan until he won that race nowhere to be seen in Paris Roubaix like Ronda is the most obvious in terms of his 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 track record once again, it's a shame that he's around at the same time as Vanderpool and Vogaccio, who are so, so good at that kind of profile. Because can he beat both of them? Don't quite know, unless it's like a sprint scenario. But can he beat Vanderpool in a reduced bunch sprint? I can't beat him. <laughs> no, but we all remember. That is true. That is true. <laughs> again. You just remember like that. It's just when they attack up the Paterberg. Like, we all remember it. Like, it's just such a savage attack. When Vanderpool and Vogaccio go just like i really just struggle to see anybody like even van Aert, i just really think that it's like pigatra and vanderpool maybe that's just the recency bias of, of last year kind of playing but i just think it's just going to be really hard for pedersen to follow it but i do think that he, he could do it if he's got absolutely magic legs and he's had a really good day up to that point and hasn't had to deal with any mechanicals or setbacks and he's got the freshest legs possible is it's possible he could hang in lombardy up are we saying he wins Tour of Lombardy? How <laughs> <laughs> much of a bill you do this one? Yeah. Um, you're all slide him into it. Nobody's beating Tare. Yeah, no one's beating Tare. Like, in Lombardy. It's such a hard era to be like a sort of fifth best puncher in the world because like there's such like a big like upper echelon of guys and you got the couple in between. I think Payson's not far off being a Galactica. He has, like, really, really strong results. He's a world champion, for Christ's sake, you know. The best world champ. Well, it, also, yeah. That was a bang in world championships. Absolutely. That was, yeah. Bang was quite good. <laughs> uh, in terms of the men's race, at least. E3 or, or Kane's Babelkamp may be a little bit more realistic this year. Yeah. Sorry to rain in his parade. It's true. No, because Matteo Jorgensen is actually winning those. Thanks. <laughs> I've already called it. I've already called that Matteo Jorgensen is winning E3. It's going to be Matteo Jorgensen and Wild Vanar coming across the line holding hands, and Wild Vanar gives the win to Matteo Jorgensen because Wild's going to win next week at Ronda. Oh, wait. <laughs> I've never heard that one before. <laughs> <laughs>